We on? We are on. So I want to welcome everybody to the Stafford Hamlet community meeting. Uh, welcome this evening. As you come in, we just want to make sure that you are familiar with the raise your hand feature. Um, that is in the bottom portion of your screen. That is how you are going to be able to access um, the uh, public comment period. So we'll, you'll want to go ahead and find the raise your hand feature because that is what you'll use if and when you want to speak during public comment. So again, welcome to the Stafford Hamlet community meeting. Thank you, Katie. Yes. Um, I'm Bill Mart, um, this year's chair of the, of the Stafford Hamlet. And um, we've got a, a fairly, um, fairly full agenda this evening. Um, all of it, um, with a few exceptions on our portion, CPO is, is a different matter, but our portion is pretty much um, Hamlet directed as opposed to uh, a lot of outside information. We're gonna start out with Mark Brown, um, who is the Lake Oswego Heritage Council um, um, keeper of the archive. And uh, he's gonna um, share with us some of his knowledge of our area specifically. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, got, it's got a lot of, a lot of history and, and following uh, Mark's presentation, our own Rick Cook will uh, will give you some opportunities to uh, to win a bottle of wine. So uh, Mark is available. Um, release uh, release the hounds. Hi, Mark. You're on mute, Mark. You need to unmute yourself, Mark. Bottom left. Okay. Anyway, uh, I am the uh, director at the Oswego Heritage House, one of the board of directors, and I have spent the last uh, four years uh, archiving Oswego and area uh, collections of families and, and uh, museum memorabilia and that sort of thing. I uh, met Rick about four years ago on uh, one of our uh, projects, and uh, he forced me into his house and made me uh, preserve the uh, cook family collections. And uh, I met with him uh, nearly every Wednesday for the last three years, um, sort of stabilized his collection, uh, fell in love with uh, the history uh, of your area. I uh, was in the middle of in 2019 writing a book on a, a Waters Carmen family collection of two, two of his granddaughters. It took a whole year to do that. I finished that up and vowed never ever to do that again. So uh, two weeks later, uh, Rick made me uh, start on another project. And the current Hazalia project uh, is the um, interpretive analysis of 10 of his diaries in his family collection from 1898 to um, 1936. He has a lot more diaries than that, but I, I just took those because they were representative, I think, of your community and the forces that, that worked within it over that five decade period. Um, I, I, so basically starting the, the history of your area was amazingly frustrating because it's so fragmented with the research that has been done that I didn't quite know where to start. You know, there are some, oh, 60 year old versions uh, all the way up to uh, um, uh, Steve Dietz's uh, work that was never quite finished or published. So I just basically started on ground one and the pillars of your community are the schools, the Grange and the churches. So I've done essays on all three of those. Uh, and I just, uh, I'm almost finished with um, the um, uh, agricultural aspect, which is my weakest link. But uh, uh, I'm putting that all together. I have scanned all 10 diaries, uh, well over 3,500 pages. I have transcribed all 10 diaries and I have um, uh, done the interpretation of those. So basically, there will be a diary entry. It'll mention members of your community, 
over those five decades. And I will go find out who these people are, uh, where they lived, what they did, and how, how they interacted with uh, the bakers and the cooks and uh, the Longs and the Fialas, if you will, just everybody, the Davidsons and the Steinhilvers, um, uh, all up and down the road there. So it's amazingly, uh, um, it's, it's a large bit of work and I will be done in about two or three months. I've just finished the photographic gallery. Uh, everybody that lived in your community that had a photo taken, I found it and uh, it will be part of that. I've done well, well, almost a hundred genealogies of of the people that lived in your community. And I've done 18 family histories all up and down Stafford and Rosemont as well. The, the, the Wittens and um, just everybody that lived there, the Davidsons and the, the Pollards and uh, certainly the Cooks and uh, the Bakers that lived around the corner on Child Road. So that's been my, my uh, love of my life. Uh, and if any of you would ever like to meet me or see the work or read some of the essays uh, that I've produced. Uh, I would really appreciate that. I would like you to read what I've written and correct my errors. Um, something this, this uh, large, um, uh, you know, I, I, I've done editing endlessly. I have people edit it for me. I've gone to and met with uh, several people, some of them even out of state, uh, to try to make the most accurate picture of your area as possible. I like it myself, but of course I'm very biased and uh, I would like you to help me with the academic corrections of this work. Uh, or at least if not that, at least um, come visit me and come look at what this work is. I, I wanna represent accurately the, your history. So that's, that's what I've been doing. Mark, where would they come and see you? Well, it, 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 well, they can certainly come to the Heritage House. Uh, you know, it's that, you, do all of you know where the Oswego Heritage House is? Yeah, it's, it's the white building at the end of A. Uh, I will meet you anytime, even if the weekend is more convenient for you, I'll, I'll meet you then. Uh, I don't talk endlessly. Uh, you give me the, the amount of time and then I'll, I'll give you a little tour of what we do and what I have done at the Heritage House. Uh, independent of this particular project and the Carmen project as well. So yeah, uh, Rick will give you my phone number. And if you would like, I will come to you uh, and uh, we can have a visit. So I, I do that quite a lot lately, so. And I think the other piece that, that Mark and I chatted about a little bit in doing this is the fact that um, we would love to get any pictures or stories or anything that you may have, um, Len Schauber, not to point at anybody about the somebody that's been around since uh, you know Athey uh, Creek began. Um, but if you have any connections, if uh, we came across uh, a gal through uh, a, a Wonker that lives in West Lynn that I didn't know about until about three weeks ago. So um, any connections you may have, Mark and I would love to hear it, and we'll follow through with it. And uh, it's been really. Eric is just absolutely marvelous. And if you ever get a chance to go over in, to the uh, Oswego Heritage Council, the house over there, he's got such great uh, things put up all over the place and he rotates the, the things through. You want to touch on that real quick, Mark? Oh, yeah. Well, one of the things that I do are exhibits. I've done 15 since I got here five years ago and uh, currently in the middle of a project, possibly for, this, for the new city hall that's going up. But, and I do little ones as well. Uh, I have two exhibits up now in uh, pretty snooty retirement facilities. So I, I do that as well. And then the Heritage House itself has a uh, gallery space that we do um, th that uh, we're just about to tear down and revamp. Uh, so I, I do the exhibit thing. I do talks. Uh, uh, even, even last year, I did five talks to various groups about things depending upon what they wanted to hear. And uh, so I sort of just travel around and do that. One of the, I think, really rewarding things is when I start to, uh, when I go to your community and I start to kick rocks over and all these interesting stories just sort of percolate up and out and, and these amazing characters. And then we sort of 
track leads and most of them don't go anywhere, but sometimes you pull on a string and pretty soon you're talking to this wonderful person that, that had a mother that lived there uh, and then they know somebody and then we, we wind up in Alabama or Florida or West Virginia talking to people. For example, I think uh, the last couple of months or so uh, through Rick, uh, the Witten family uh, archives are just glorious. I mean, we finally got those in pictures that I have never seen before. Um, I, I pretty much think I have seen every photo there ever is, and then all of a sudden a whole cache of one of your ancestors, for example, will pop up out of just nowhere, and we have these great conversations and relationships with these people. What I do with all of this stuff, after I sort of tie this project up, uh, I'm going to, in the Heritage House, I have 34 family collections, e everywhere from the Davidson Diaries, uh, to the Pollards and just pretty much everybody in our area. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, generate one for certainly the Wonkers and the Wittens as well. The Wittens story is just fascinating to me and I'll share that with you when I can uh, sit down sometime and talk or give, give a talk to your group. That's great. And along that way, I know we're short on time here, but uh, either one of the Katie's, could you post that thing where we've got some pictures that we don't know who people are and so to kind of spur maybe some, uh, some community involvement in saying like, oh, I think I might know who that person is. We're putting a little thing together where we'll have the, you know, do you know these people? Or it's kind of a little quiz of, you know, if you can name these, we'll put you into a drawing of uh, maybe getting a bottle of the Stafford Hamlet uh, private reserve bottle of wine. So do you have that... Uh, Little PowerPoint, Katie. Um, I. Or Katie. Bill said he sent it to you. Or, if you want to hit see. me with the share thing, I could share it. Maybe. Are you allowed to share? You should be allowed to share, Rick. Okay, so. Um, I don't see it on the bottom of my screen. Oh, there it is. Let's give that a shot. Did that come through? Yeah, um, sure did. Okay, so there's that. So basically, it's just saying that uh, Eugene Wine Sellers, who really helped with the previous wine uh, promos and stuff, is uh, is going to agree that they will uh, provide the wine and stuff. So if you know the answer, which I will show you the question here shortly. Just email me at rickjcook at frontier.com and uh, we will uh, send you or connect with you on that. So here is, with hopefully, oh, I guess I got to play the slide for one second. Ah. <laughs> Isn't that fancy? So that's all the information and. So if you can identify these pioneer family members or who they are, and uh, there's actually a little hint at the uh, bottom for those of you that may like, what the heck's he looking at? But, um, and then uh, we'll, I think we'll probably post this also in the answer on the uh, Hamlet website, staffordhamlet.com. So, and no, Rich, you can't, uh, can't play. I can't either. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Mark. So well, I, guess... I, I know who the names of these people are, and I know what the names of their dogs were. <laughs> so, uh, oh, do you know their nicknames? I yeah. do. <laughs> well, I do. And, and, that, and that's why that you aren't, aren't available for, for part of the contest. It's like all those, the TV and radio folks say family members are excluded well yes. you're, you're, you're family so mark is going to has agreed to do this um uh as a as a monthly uh piece to bring us new information he's kind of giving you some background uh rick's throwing a picture at you uh, be a new picture next time and um and we'll let mark um get get down in the weeds with uh, some of the information that that he feels is uh 
is is interesting to us all. And I hope that and in hearing this, that everybody that thinks they might have uh, some uh, resource or some contact that would benefit um, the greater heritage effort that, that Mark's putting in along with Rick, um, don't hesitate to reach out to either of them. So thanks very much, Mark. This was good. Thank you. Thank Does you anybody have much. any questions for Mark before he goes? Just real quick, anybody? Len, I'm going to be sure to get you his number. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Come see me when you can. Uh, thanks thanks very Mark. much, Mark. Okay, uh, so we had an election. Um, those of you um, in the in the greater audience, uh, whoever you are, and hopefully you voted. Uh, and if you did, thank you very much. Um, the election was for uh, five um, board members uh, on the. Yeah, five board members on the uh, Hamlet board and uh, or maybe, God, maybe we had six, do we have six? Anyway, that was a, a, a whole, th three, three new folks. And, um, and then we had uh, three new folks going on to the, the CPO board. Um, all of those um, folks who put their name in the hat were elected. And I think we had something north of 250, Katie Wilson, nodding your head, that's a good sign. Uh, 256 folks plus or minus that voted for the Hamlet. And I think 30, was it 30 or 30 plus for the CPO? And, um, and then we were successful. I mean, it was our first effort at having a, an, an election, um, any kind of vote. Um, online and it worked. So thanks very much uh, for all of you that participated. Um, thanks very much for our new board members, Kelsey Vu, Andy Munson, Tate Morgan, uh, <laughs> and, um, and for the board members, Patty Mamula and, uh, and uh, Katie Kreider, um, who uh, were on the board, but also agreed to run again. Uh, and, and Len, I think you were up too, weren't you, Len? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we did have six. And out of that, um, we also had the CVP vote. So our community vision plan, which is, was a, a rebuild and um, had been put out at the end of last year. Uh, we had two town halls on it in February and March, and then we had a big, big gap. Uh, so that passed as well, I want to say 224, 226 uh, out of the 256 folks that voted. And that came out to about 89%. So we had a, a good turnout as well as a good, a good positive response. So again, thanks to all of you that, that participated. <laughs> And, um, and, and helped us get down the road a little further. Uh, so you can see, I think because their names are all up there, although Tate isn't here uh, and neither is Patty, but um, the rest of our board is here. And when we uh, jump into the CPO meeting, um, you'll get to get introduced to those folks um, as well. Um, I think the only other thing I'd wanna add is our our, uh, our officers are the same as last year with the exception of Jana Lombardi went off the board and turned over um, all that she knew to a, a variety of folks, um, Kelsey and Tate being part of that, as well as Katie Kreider, who has agreed to be our new secretary. So thank you very much, Katie Kreider. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you never see when Katie, Katie Kreider sits really still, you're not sure if it's like a still picture or if she's really there, but she is in fact there waving at us. Um, so moving on, uh, Rich Fiala, you wanna take the, uh, the traffic, latest traffic sure. update? So most of you know that I belonged, I'm a member of the Clackamas County um, Congestion Traffic Committee 
that is uh, funded by the license renewal program every year. And we met uh, on Zoom, just like everybody else, about three weeks ago now. And it was basically an update to let us know what was going on and how the funds were coming in. And the funds are coming in slow, but if you've done any registering, registering of your own vehicle, you know that um, the delay is shortening their, people are going in, renewing their, their type, their uh, registrations and so on. And so the money is coming in. Uh, the Johnson Road slash Childs Road and Stafford, that combined intersection is still on the books for 23 and 24. Uh, they've got teams out there doing surveying, trying to understand the, the complexities and the necessities of how to be able to uh, manage those intersections appropriately and within a, a, a limited budget. And uh, it moves forward. Um, you know, it, it's steady by jerks. That's how things like that are done. So that's pretty much it. Thanks. Any questions, by the way? Yeah, uh, Mike, I have a quick question, Rich. Yeah, go ahead. Um, on the uh, Fields Bridge. Yes. Um, okay, I when I I sent, I think, is the person named uh, Niles, N-Y-L-S, or N N Y S whatever, with the county? Um, you know, I only know certain traffic people because they're okay. the ones that are directly involved. But anyway. Uh, the problem is, is uh, the school district decided that they're going to put a uh, roundabout there and slow the speed down to 20 miles an hour. Have you been made aware of that? Nope. We don't. My committee would not see that kind of thing, uh, especially since is the roundabout going to be on the east side of the Tualatin River? Nope. It's going to be on the bridge. They're going to put a roundabout on the bridge. <laughs> Part of it is going to be on the bridge. In other words, on that's the where the, the median island that starts is going to be on the bridge. East end or west end? West end? No, east end. Okay. All right. Um, that's city. Right. That's city. And no, so no, it's going to be on the bridge. Well, itself. Plaquemines County has that. Has I don't know if they've there. given that portion of the road to Westland yet. Part of their agreement is that they would fund particular amounts to bring it up to code, not new projects like a new roundabout, and then their intent. And part of the, the registration fee, 10% of it actually goes to the county then to turn that over to the cities. They won't manage that project. The county, once they turn it over, it's done. And so if that's well into the future, you're not gonna get, I don't know how much county input you'll have on that, uh, it's probably going to be destined mostly for city if it's four or five years down the road. Uh, it's next year. So has the, okay, so we're getting a little, that's not off topic, don't get me wrong, but the net, my question is, so is the planning commission approved the school yet? Uh, the drawings are delivered to them this month. Okay, so uh, I, I think that's a little in advance then of it going to happen next year if I mean without the roundabout they can't build the school okay but there is a process right I mean things are going to fall into place logically and they wouldn't put a roundabout in if the planning commission or the planning commission in Westland wouldn't approve that I mean that if that's one of the requirements I believe there's other things going on as most people have kept up on that at all would understand, and I'm sure you do, John, that there are multiple questions about that school being situated there. And, um, you know, I don't have any insight directly on that because of the, uh, my committee doesn't, doesn't deal with that. I, I'm outside of that purview. <laughs> okay. But I, I think you should, it'd be nice for us to understand that. And so, especially since, you know, what are you, um, Two thirds of a mile away, uh, maybe a third of a mile, quarter yeah. mile. Yeah. So I mean, that's right in your yard. And yeah. Uh, so is their intent to put dollar through again then? Okay. The, no. They cannot come off Lamont Falls Drive except right there because of the bike path 
uh, that's been approved by the city. And so they go, this is the only place you can go through because and because they would have to punch something through in the sense that Dollar Street is an illegal street. Uh, it's the largest cul-de-sac. And so without the roundabout and punch it through, they can't build. I understand. And I'm like, well, just assume you can't build a roundabout and move to someplace else. Right. Good question. Uh, you know, we're all going to have to follow it. So. Any, Rich, there there's a question on? out in the audience uh, from Judy Large. Judy, can you unmute yourself? Well, I'm confused. You're talking about a new roundabout at Dollar Street by the Fields Bridge. Is that what you're talking about? It's going yeah. to be on Willamette Falls Drive. That makes no sense to me. Well, go. you can find it on the uh, school website. That, they're oh. going to put a roundabout there. If they put a school in, Judy, what the, what John's saying is the only thing right. that would allow that to be situated would be that traffic control. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I watched the county website and I have not seen anything and that could be a big nightmare. Oh, it will That's be. All I'm saying. Katie, any other questions? Uh, I don't see any other raised hands. Okay. I'm going to shut off. Thanks. Um, okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on to um, a, a revisit of, of a Portland State University award that um, that they entered our project from the Merck team, um, Masters of Urban Planning, um, that that worked on our project. I don't know, it was January of last year through June or the beginning of June. And uh, this is a, uh, yeah, in fact, you know, Rich, why don't you, why don't you take it from there? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, oh, by the way, you were supposed to send me that letter. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I've got it in front of me. So when you get okay. to so, tell this for you. Bill actually received a request uh, from, the, from that uh, group that if we could do a small write-up about their project and how it's worked for us, uh, they have actually been nominated for an award. And that nomination is a statewide award. And it's my assumption from the way it was worded that they would then, if they are successful in, in their um, hope for an award, that they would then move on to a national award program as well. And so Bill and I crafted a a letter over a couple days. We had real short notice. Um, the Portland State University, um, uh, Dr. Megan Horse actually sent a letter. Uh, we got that sent to us so that we could see how she was writing it. And then as normal, Bill and I created our own, own letter and uh, in our own way. And Bill, um, there you go. You're going to read, Bill? We're going to read, but we're also going to turn ourselves to turn the mute off. Um, so a, a few of the things that, that Megan mentioned, which gives some context to those of you that haven't read or had time to um, embrace this uh, <clears throat> this project. It's 200 and some pages and um, certainly is, is available to anybody that's interested. The project, according to Megan, um, empowered a community led board to take proactive action in promoting their community's interest and prepare the board to obtain and access resources and partnerships that would need they would need in order to find success in their long-term goals. Um, essentially, they gave us a bunch of tools that aren't just germane to the moment, but go going forward as, as the, the area evolves. <clears throat> This um, the the American um, American Planners Association, I think, is the <clears throat> excuse me is the group that that uh, that puts this together. Uh, it sounds like on an annual basis, and and the 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 one of the things that that Rich and I um, mentioned when we wrote our letter of support was that we were using their document, that is the um, the document that the students created 
to work through our retreat and some of those tools uh, that, that they identified um, for us and, and goals. So we applied the tools that they gave us to our, um, to our, our, our five um, priorities that were in the new uh, community vision plan. We'll see how this all plays out, but it was kind of exciting to see the university look at what had come across their desk and see this as an opportunity. Uh, Megan did mention that this is that it's not only unique in the context of what goes on in Oregon. Oregon is pretty unique in, in their planning process and in how they um, how they define properties. One of the things that um, Jay Miner had, had always um, mentioned to me that the Columbia um, Land Trust had more success raising money in Washington uh, than they do in Oregon. And the reason for that is um, they, um, they could get money from counties through the state um, because they don't have real strong agricultural protection in, in Washington, whereas in Oregon, we do have a better job of it, and it's um, it, it's it's not as um, it's not as precarious. However, being that we're in the urban reserve, that kind of changes a lot of that, and that's what made this unique and why Portland State saw this as an opportunity. So um, we'll let you guys keep you posted as we know more. Um, but um, but thanks, Rich, and and. Uh, and if anybody from Portland State's listening, thanks, thanks to you folks again. Uh, so, uh, CPO, um, Len, are you uh, are you going to lead the uh, lead the collective on this, or um, has somebody else taken the reins? Well, right now we're basically just I'm looking at the agenda, and uh, it's all new to me. <laughs> but I'd first like to introduce the uh, new CPO board members. Uh, Andy Munson and Randy Yamada and uh, Miss Jones. Uh, I'm sorry, not Andy, but uh, uh, Tom McCabe. Um, we have yet to get together and kind of decide a strategy, so uh, we'll get there. As far as the agenda is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any information uh, as far as uh, the new applications. Uh, Mitch, if you've got a word or two on the upcoming hearing, uh, that will be happening on the 11th. So we'll hopefully give testimony for that for the Willamette uh, United Football Club. I don't know if a word or two is enough to, to speak to this whole thing. I could go on all night, I'm afraid. Um, but basically, there is a Thursday, this Thursday, uh, 9.30 a.m. Um, uh, CUP remand hearing and we're working like crazy to, to try and get ready for it and rich and and rick cook have been, have been nice and set you know made up a nice long uh history of the area and rural and, and some defensive things for us and some of that and our guys were putting together our, our our opposition actually um and you know getting ready to have you know have our, our meetings on thursday really and it's a long story but if you know if, if we could possibly, you know, get this overturned, it would be a big, a big help for us. If not, I think either direction, uh, there'll be an appeal to Luba. So it's going to be a, it's an ongoing fight, but, you know, we have, we have a reasonable chance, I think, to, to make this thing happen. Um, and any support, you know, is, is, is welcome, guys. And uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at that for now. You know, maybe Rich or, or Rick could comment if need to be, but otherwise that's it for now. Okay, and as far as uh, I don't have anything to pass on for the CPO summit update or the Western uh, School Project update, because I haven't received anything from them. There, there is one on the uh, Westland Wilsonville. Um, the approval that they received for the shed that they're going to be building next to Stafford School, uh, Mr. Fallow has um, appealed that to Luba. And what doesn't make sense to me is that the school board meeting last night, they approved the contract. And I'm like, this has to go to Luba. How can you approve a contract that may never be built? As we'll have to see. 
Yes. Uh, thanks, Len. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks for the updates. And, hey, Bill. Uh, yeah. Uh, just real quick, uh, I want everybody to know that uh, Lake Oswego had approved at their last uh, meeting uh, almost $600,000 to design the athletic field. It's going to go in on the northwest corner of the Rosemont Stafford roundabout. It's called the Receipt property um, right across, well, it's west of, of Lusher Farm. So another little project that may have drastic impacts. Uh, they haven't done the traffic study yet, but between that project and the golf course, the swimming pool and the rec center all going into the golf course, it's gonna get interesting up here. So um, stay tuned. So before we move on, John, did you say that Rob Fallow filed an appeal? Yes, he did. What date was that? Do you know? Um, it's not critically important, but. It, it was like, uh, it was last, okay. I got the copy of it last week. Okay. But he, he did file it within the 21 days. Okay. okay. So that was a standard. It's been approved by the county, but I'm contesting it. Did they have any grounds for that contest? Yeah, there was. Um, the question was asked by Rob Fallow, and the answer by Remo Douglas was that this was going to be an accessory building to the Stafford Primary School because it has. Uh, that's the only way you can get into it is going through the Stafford primary land. And the, the goal of the of the school district is to make that like dump everything right, that they want right. to centralize in this area. And Fallow has come out and said, that's not allowed. And that's the reason for the appeal is they said, this is an accessory building to Stafford primary. Mm. And when uh, it was said by Remo Douglas, I'm like, you don't know what you just said. Right, because that's not the community was never told us at all. No, it was always always told us that it was going to be, in fact, for the whole of the of the uh, right. school district. Great, thanks, John. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, um, do we have any any other questions before we uh, we move on to the the Hamlet board meeting? Okay, I do, I do, I do. Sorry, Bill. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Is this, so this sorry, was the time is up. You, you missed your opportunity. It was a little window. Go ahead. It was real close. So, Len, this is Rich. Is the CPO going to have nominations for officers in a public meeting, or do you guys do that internally? Just internally. We'll get together okay. just internally. Okay. And so there's not an election of those folks no. then? Okay. No. Thank you. Uh, I should say too, though, that um, uh, as as an aside, that um, all three of the new uh, CPO board members sat in on our uh, um, a couple um, on the PowerPoint, which was the bulk of the meeting to get our new goals. And uh, John McCabe was was there uh, throughout the whole the whole meeting. Um, so. Uh, kudos to them for <laughs> for taking more of your time to get a feel for what we're about and what where we're trying to go. And uh, you know, I think that speaks um, highly of your of your commitment. So thanks thanks for doing that and thanks for being there. Um, the other thing that I should mention uh, in the public forum here is even though I identified all the people that were elected by the community, I didn't mention that we have. A, uh, a liaison, a student liaison um, in Carolyn Comer. And um, she is also now actively part of our group and is on a couple of committees. Um, so uh, <laughs> thanks Carolyn for, for again, sticking it out through the, um, through the retreat as well as being willing to, um, to hang with, uh, with, <clears throat> with a bunch of geezers. Um, and I, I say that with love. Anyway, uh, okay, so on to, the, on to the Hamlet board meeting. Um, gonna call it to order. And uh, hopefully you folks have all, although it doesn't sound like Len did, uh, had, have a, had a chance to see the agenda and, uh, <clears throat> and, a, and feel like it's uh, worthy of the evening's events. Um, 
Do we have any additions or subtractions to the uh, to the agenda, or can we approve it? I move that the agenda be approved as written. Do we have a second? Second. No one. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of approving the uh, the agenda for the Hamlet board meeting, um, want to give a hand raise. Uh, thank you. All those opposed. Okay, I think everybody that's here and um, thanks for joining up, Tate. Good to see you. Um, I think that was a, a unanimous um, unanimous consent. Uh, the minutes. Kate Roth sent out the minutes, which for me, it's always good to remember what it is that we did um, uh, just a month ago. Uh, I hope you've had a chance to read those. And, uh, and if so, are there any changes, omissions um, to, the, uh, to the minutes? That being I'm said, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as I'm written? Approved. Approved. Mm -hmm. Any second? Come on now. Oh, Jane Comer, thank you very much. Okay, minutes have been um, a motion to uh, approve, uh, moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes, um, again, raise your hands. Uh, anybody that's opposed? Okay, good job. Minutes are approved. Uh, Treasurer's report, Bill Long. Uh, I sent one out to everybody. Yeah. Let me know if you didn't get it. And um, there's not a lot of action going on with the COVID, but uh, the good news is it matches the checkbook. That's all I can tell you. Good, good job. Any questions? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, one question I've got, you may want to change the date, Bill, is uh, January 21, not January 20. Uh, January. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a test. Thank you. Right. <laughs> um, see, good see Thank there, you, Lynn. there are some of us that, that are, in fact, engaged. Uh, good job, Len. Uh, Bill Wong has done some research. Um, on the post office, uh, our post office box, which if you recall, I don't know, it's probably been four or five months that we moved it to the West Lynn post office from the, uh, I think the UF UPS yes. store in, in West Lynn. And there's rumblings that they're not gonna get their, um, post office isn't going to get their act together to have a new building when the lease runs out. They've had numerous extensions. And so they're going to temporarily move the post office to enjoying with Gladstone. Um, Bill did some research. You want to tell them what you found, Bill, Bill Long? Yeah. yeah. Um, the... Uh, yeah. UPS boxes are exorbitant compared to what our needs are. Uh, they were 230 something, 300 and something Lake Oswego and, and the place we used to be. But the Lake Oswego post office has no boxes available. And Merrillhurst apparently has. And the kind of mail we get is mostly US bank statements and mail for Lynn, the CPO, which I get and drop off. Now, Trish with the county has given me the bank statements well in advance of the mail. So we don't have a problem in that department, the way it's working right now. It's really fabulous. Uh, I get it enough time ahead that uh, it works for me, but I don't know what would happen for your sources, Lynn, and um, I, if they go to Gladstone, that's one thing, it's temporary. And, and I was thinking maybe we could go to Merrillhurst and say we're a governmental, a part of a governmental agency. And until this shakes out, can we reserve a box, maybe get your last available small box when that time comes? Because there's going to be a lot of people looking for PO boxes. 
And if they can do that, that would be the best solution of all. And I didn't get over and do that. I thought I'd toss it out to the board. And that's, that's where we are. Uh, their lease is up February 28th. And wow. that's all I know, yeah. Any, any discussion on that, folks? I have a point of discussion. So Katie Wilson, do we have to send it to a PO box? Can it go to a person's home address? You do not need to use a PO box. You can use a person's address. Um, we just have a lot of a lot of Hamlet's and CPOs prefer the PO box just to keep things separate and make sure that mail doesn't get lost, you know, shuffled with yeah. personal mail. No, I get that. I have a PO box at Merrillhurst that I use um, for my business. I I small box is 130, 134 bucks a year. And that's, that's what we're paying now. But I, I'm concerned about Lynn getting his mail. Lynn? Yeah, right now I haven't uh, received anything. And what I get is forward, somebody picks it up at the post office box at West Lynn and forwards it on to me. But uh, I've been doing that, yeah. Well, uh, okay. Uh, this doesn't feel like rocket science. There's there's two options here. We can either put somebody's name on it, which is what it always was until about a year and a half or two years ago when I felt like a, a P.O. box was a better way to go because then it isn't tied to somebody if they go, you know, off the off our board or off the CPO board, it's 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 independent. It's been way, way more, way more in flux. The, with the post office situation than it yeah. has been with people going off. So I, I don't know that I didn't have it right. To, to Tate's point, I mean, if, if he's running down there, you know, periodically anyway, um, uh, at least he's going to get it partway back. And whether Len comes up and gets it from him or one of us runs it down or Tate runs it down, I mean, it just seems like Merrillhurst is, is the way to go. And once they figure out where the Westland post office is going to be, then we can certainly go back there if that's what we want to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm there every other day. And I have, if it's going to land, then I, I have no problem dropping it off over to Shaber Lane. Great. Thanks a lot. So, Bill Wong, you go down there and, and throw a big pocket of money at these guys and, and see what we have to do to get out of our contract with Westland. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. Great, thanks so much. Will you all just let me know? Week. Will you just let me know what the address is that we need to change for our yeah. records once you know for sure? Okay. Okay. It's PO 118, just, you know, for now. I'm still waiting for the county to reimburse me for the fee we paid last October. <laughs> oh, okay, Lynn, I will check into that too. So, Bill Long, Tate's suggesting that we send the documents to his P.O. box. What I took from what you said, you were going to go down and get a new box. I think we just need to clarify which, which way we're agreeing to. I don't have a problem because I get my information directly by email, but Lynn needs material and if it's okay with Lynn and Tate, then it can be sent to Tate's PO box and, and maybe we could reimburse him somewhat for the service or the uh, the favor he's doing us. I don't know. Well, when we're looking at- I'll just muddle it. It's easy. Well, in, in the case- I'm going down there anyways. Okay. So- uh, why don't why don't we why don't we start with that and you the CPO can have this discussion out, outside of us and if you think this is going to work fine and if you don't think it's going to work then at least we've got you know it, it's going to go someplace by the end by next by next month <laughs> the, the Westland Post Office it may not be there so we kind of have to do something so thanks Tate we'll we'll throw it in your box for now and and let let the uh, the CPO board sort it out and if they're they're okay with that fine and if not then we'll go after another box thanks bud thank you I have a question 
Kate, Katie Wilson, didn't the county just a couple months ago uh, set up that Westland Post Office? I mean, we paid in advance, right? How much money do we think we have coming back? I'm, I'm going to go in and ask them. Maybe I don't know. What should I do? You're asking where, what to do with the money when they return it to you? No, he's asking uh, if he yeah. gets money back. <laughs> I, I'm guessing I get money back, don't you think? Well, we paid $168 for the next full year. Actually, it's uh, 13 months from October. So we use it. October? Yeah, October is when it first started. I mean, I would presume you would get a reimbursement, but I don't know what the post yeah, office right. rules okay. are. You weren't involved, yeah. But if okay. you get money back and that goes into your account, um, I think it should go to Lynn. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll work that out as far as where it goes okay. if we get something back, but yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so Bill Wong, you're still gonna go down and, and have that discussion. Check it out. Okay, yeah, I'll be happy to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, here. Okay, so Katie Kreider, um, we're, we're going to um, put on the screen, if you would, um, what Jane put together and got over to you. There we go. Excellent. So um, I don't know if Jane worked off of, of what uh, Amy Herman had um, helped with or not, but this is essentially um, a, a synopsis of, of what our, our uh, committees are, um, what our responsibilities are, and um, what our basis for our goals are, um, which um, really, thanks so much, Jane, for, for doing that. And if, Carolyn, if you help with this, thanks to, to you. Um, so I should say out loud that anybody that's out in the community that's, that's watching or listening to this, um, there's, there's 10 folks on our, on our Hamlet board and, and one student liaison. If you, any of you out there have any interest in being on a committee uh, or helping in some way that isn't even identified as a committee, um, reach out to us. Um, myself, um, Rich Fiala, uh, you got Rick Cooks, um, even though he's not on the board, you got Rick Cooks uh, because you're gonna, I'm sure you're gonna put it, put your name in for the, uh, for the wine, uh, wine drawing. So uh, reach out to any of us and, um, and we'd be, be grateful to have all the help that we can get. Uh, we're, um, we'll, we'll get down here in, in a few minutes to um, some of the, um, you see your community liaison pieces. I think, I, I think Kathy, um, Kathy Meyer is one of our neighbors and, and we had talked to her about possibly uh, running for the board, but she's, sitting in on, uh, on some of the city councils, I think specifically Tualatin, uh, Len does that as well. Um, the school district, um, we all kind of had our, our hand in that tangentially, although John, um, has, John McCabe has definitely put some time in on that. Um, Andy's taken on the sheriff's department, which has some contacts with the thousand friends. Um, so some of those are, are being dealt with. Um, <clears throat> if you move down, you'll see um, the, the communications committee, which includes Patty and Katie, Carolyn, uh, Kelsey, Tate, and, um, and Matt, um, Matt Palmer. Uh, Matt's a past, past board member uh, that's been helping us with the website, I think, as much as anything in a little bit um, before recently with the, uh, the newsletter. And one of the things that occurred to me when we were going through this is, um, you know, Patty's taking care of the, the welcome wagon, the Hamlet at a glance, uh, handouts. Um, Katie has been doing signage, but Andy is, is 
pretty much got signage um, in his in his back pocket. Not that we don't need to tell him what we want the signs to look like, but he can certainly give us some guidance there. And Carolyn's uh, going to involve students as as needed. Um, the newsletter. Um, it, it sounds like um, Kelsey is, is going to handle most of that. Is that right, Kelsey? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I kind of, uh, kind of snuck up on you, didn't I? Um, <laughs> I forgot where the mute button was for a minute there. Uh, Jana, I think, um, shared, it, it sounds like when we talked the other day, it's that she has shared the, um, a video that she made, and, and I think that's also, I, I would assume, some of the information she's passed on to, to Katie Kreider in, in, uh, in being the secretary. So um, that, that's, I mean, but what a great resource. And, and she isn't going anywhere right away. So she's going to, she'll be available if we need to ask her questions. Yeah, um, great. Tate's going to do social great. media um, and Kelsey as well. Um, and, and Tate does website, um, website stuff for his business. And he's going to uh, help us out with that. So Jana, so so Jana was very insistent that the secretary update the agenda. Like that was that was something I tried to tell her that, that I was asked to do. She was she was very insistent that I not do it. Um, so I didn't know how how to approach that. And then as far as social media goes, I really I really think Kelsey. I looked at Kelsey's pictures, and Kelsey does an amazing job with photography and nature and the kind of the I think the rural feel for it. I'd like to be second on social media. Yeah, I think you mentioned that, but yeah, yeah you're, you're right. I should have had Kelsey um, as, as, as lead and, and you as, as support. So, so the, I, I'm, I'm not clear though, what, what was, Jana was saying something about, about the, the agenda? And, and, and he, wanted, he, he said that was after I had <laughs> made the point a couple times on saying, hey, I need the login info. She was telling me that the it was the secretary's job to upload the agenda. So, uh, I mean, I have no problem not doing that. I, I was only doing it because I just felt like maybe that my, you know, I know how to work WordPress, you know, okay. Um, you know, probably not as good as Jana and whoever built that site, but I can at least figure out how to, how to upload the agenda. So I'm happy, I'm happy doing it, but if, if, if we want to. Okay. Um, I think well, well, th this is a pretty organic group, and I can't imagine that with um, with all the responsibilities that Katie Kreider has. That I mean, she isn't. I think anything we take off her plate, she's not going to be. I have, I have absolutely no problem. It'll take me two minutes to do it. So okay, that, well, great. Well, you and you and Katie Kreider worked that out. But thanks, thanks, Tate, for yeah. for stepping up. That, that's great. Um, so we're moving down here to programming and scheduling, which I don't know how we got through that whole thing and only let Len, <laughs> who is really the, the guy that gets us a place to have a meeting as opposed to creating the meeting the, the itself. But should we ever be able to have a meeting someplace, Len's our guy. Um, so uh, however we're gonna put that together, I think, Rich and I and a few other folks, you know, kind of kick this around for this one, but it, it'd be nice to have um, somebody these, um, that, that um, we'll, we'll take that on and just have that discussion. And really it's, it's a matter like this time, Rick Cook uh, reached out to, to Mark Brown to get him on board. Um, it, it's just a matter of, of what we want to bring to the community, where, where there's a sense of, of, of value in, in bringing somebody on and then and getting it lined up. So anyway, keep that in mind, folks. Um, and uh, and if we can't find somebody, then I start to knock on doors and, and, and nobody likes that. So uh, agriculture, uh, Rich has always been the guy for this. Um, hopefully we can support him. It's becoming more critical that agriculture take the lead on a lot of levels to get this place um, more actively involved back to Mark Brown and his heritage. Um, this place was, a, uh, the area was, was heavily uh, farm, 
uh, and engaged in farming um, and probably until the last 40 or 50 years. So it's just a matter of, uh, of reactivating what's, what's always been possible. Um, community events, uh, Katie Kreider, Jane Comer, Andy, and Tate. Um, I don't, uh, Katie, you wanna uh, throw out some of the ideas that you, that you had um, and kicked around with some of us, given that we're probably not gonna do the fest. I'll say we're not gonna do the fest. Well, um, the communication committee is gonna meet this Saturday and sort of brainstorm some new ideas. But um, yeah, given the pandemic and um, another year of being a little bit more um, conservative about gathering in large groups, we will not have the family fest this year. Um, so what we're trying to do is brainstorm ideas for smaller socially distanced events that people are comfortable, um, the general public would be comfortable going to. So maybe that's farm to table dinners or um, a small booth at a um, farmer's market, kind of the, ha the Hamlet harvest, kind of what we're thinking. Uh, but anyway, we're all, this is, these are just random ideas that we've sort of thrown around, but we're all gonna get together and, and really, um, kind of um, sketch that out this Saturday as a starter for ways that we can kind of create some community engagement. Um, also a goal is more volunteer work um, within the community, not just within the Stafford Hamlet, but within the community as a whole. Um, we kick that off um, Monday at Lusher Farm and Kelsey Vu and Vu and her son Alex joined us and Bill Mark. Um, for some tree planting at Lisher Farm, and that was pretty awesome. Um, and, uh, but m moving forward, we wanna look for those opportunities. Maybe it's um, solve um, events or just ways that we can get involved and give back to the community um, and also engage with the community to um, communicate our vision and our goals. Great, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for running with that, Katie. Sure. Um, the, uh, um, the, other, the other thing that we've been, um, a few of us have been talking to uh, the cities around us um, and as well the county um, is in the, in the area of sustainability. Um, the, the three cities are all putting sustainability plans into motion. Um, Lake Oswego is a bit more um, uh, I guess down the road with theirs, but both Walt and Westland have, have made strong efforts and we want them to see us as partners in that. So that may be another area where um, if you out there in the community have interest in that regard, um, do not hesitate to, um, you know, to, to raise your hand and, and get involved because it's, it's, it's a pretty uh, focused group. We've had some meetings with some of the folks involved uh, and um, it, it could be it could be very exciting for our, our community to to um, to work with with others uh, with a like mind. Um, I solve, think, solve would be great. Uh, yeah. yeah, Andy and I's company, the, the Gambler, we were the community group of the year for Solve this year. We we got a very special award. Congratulations! Congratulations! Uh, so th at some point we have to have Tate talk to us, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe as a featured speaker about how you take a bunch of people with beater cars, go out in the woods and then come back with tons and tons of garbage. Um, and that, that doesn't include the cars, that's garbage besides the cars. Um, out of the woods, uh, yeah. No, that that's well. No, that's and I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to Saturday. I think I think looking at some alternatives for the 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 uh, Hamlet Fest, or well, we well, I think we're going to face a lot of the same um, you know issues that we faced with the gambler this last year. So I I, I think between you know Andy, uh, Katie, and Rich, and everybody on that committee, we'll be able to come up with something kind of fun and, and maybe kind of funky and cool that. Maybe we'll incorporate it in, in for, for years to come. Very good. Thanks. That's that. That's a that's a that's a great uh, great forecast. 
Uh, I think the last group um, is, I just called it a focus group, but the focus group um, includes um, Len and Carolyn Comer, and Katie Kreider and myself. And it, um, it's gonna be around us uh, coming up with some equity, diversity and inclusion um, um, standards or, or rules of the road. Uh, that we can apply in our in our organization, and uh, to some degree, with what the county is going through right now with one of their commissioners, um, it's uh, I, the, the county has plenty of information on this, and it isn't like we have to recreate the wheel. We just have to pick and choose what it is that we feel is going to work for us, and and um, and put it into motion. So, thanks to you folks for for willing to be involved in that. Um, so the um, committee reports going forward, uh, I mean, we can do this as, we, as we've done in the past, which is to share previous to the meeting and give a brief overview. Um, I, I like that because of the efficiency, um, but if you folks wanna do it differently, then I'm, I'm open to that as, you know, as an alternative. Um, any, any discussion on that? Okay, so that that was the sound of crickets, and we're just gonna uh, we're gonna keep, keep doing it the same way. Keep doing it the same way. There you go. Um, so uh, we got a few folks that have been to uh, meetings, uh, not necessarily unrelated to the Hamlet. They have impact the Hamlet. One of those would be Andy Munson, who sat down with. Uh, with the outreach sheriff who has actually come to our meetings before. Andy, you want to tell us what uh, what, what came out of that? Yeah, um, I talked with uh, Officer Sarah McClure and she does community outreach, um, helps establish neighborhood watch and said that there's actually a pretty strong neighborhood watch presence up on Pete's Mountain. Um, you know, one of the the best things she did is she pulled all the data together uh, from last year for calls for service within the Hamlet. And um, to give you a rough idea from last year, there were 489 calls for service uh, to the sheriff's office. Uh, you divide that down, that's 40.75 calls a month, um, which could be all sorts of different stuff, you know, and I'm happy to email anybody this data. Um, but just glancing over to it, you know, it could be somebody got something stolen, uh, criminal mischief, hazard in the road, uh, littering, any number of things. Um, so far this year, I didn't see anything, you know, that really stood out and the numbers were actually lower for calls for service. Um, so, you know, she, she said she'd be happy to um, get together and talk if we want to invite her to a Hamlet meeting, if we felt that that was prudent. Um, you know, I know that looking at the data, there's, there's crime reports and incident reports, um, but there's also the calls for service. And so she felt like the calls for service would be the broadest net. Um, so I wouldn't be alarmed by hearing that there's 500 some odd calls for service out here um, in a little over a year. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, 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 I think that it's probably a good idea to stay um, in touch with the sheriff's office um, and keep a number, you know, keep an eye on those numbers to see if all of a sudden we see a big uptick. Um, that's beyond just our casual observations of day to day stuff so that we can try to nip, nip some crime in the bud if it comes out here. Thanks. Thanks for doing that. Uh, John Keith, are you out there? Well, if you are, um, I think John went to the C4 meeting and was going to share um, some of the uh, some of the results of, of that. Um, Katie, Katie Wilson, can you, can you see if he's there? I don't see him on the attendee list, Bill. Ah, 
Okay then, uh, well that puts you up next, Rick Cook. Um, John was here earlier, he must have signed off. Oh, uh, okay. Um, Rick, you wanna share anything from CCI with us? Um, we did a, as a committee, we did a thing for the North Clackamas County Parks District and working on one of their uh, processes with uh, funding or staffing their new board of directors. And other than that, Katie Wilson, anything pressing for CCI? Um, I couldn't think I of anything either. <laughs> I can't think of anything that's super pressing other than CCI was gracious enough to review um, the plan for NCPRD, which doesn't really impact the Hamlet, but it is possible that some of you enjoy the parks in the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District. Um, so CCI has been supporting, helping, um, since the City of Happy Valley exited the Parks District, um, there's been kind of a renewal and re-envisioning of the advisory board for the district. And so CCI was helping review some of the processes that community members drafted for that. So that's been a lot of work that CCI has done and we're really grateful that they were willing to do that. Okay, I guess the only other thing, I just touched bases, kind of flipping through uh, the policy sessions today and heard that they were thinking about shortening the uh, citizen comment period. I don't yes. know, just to put that on our radar screen because I think that would be something very drastic that we would wanna maybe mention that, you know, um, they moved it to the end of the meeting so they can get all their business done and then open it up because I think recently there's been some uh, conflict uh, brought up on there about one of the commissioners and people fighting back and forth through the through the citizen comments. So I think they're trying to nip that in the butt a little bit, but I, I just hope that they understand that they can't take away our citizen comment period. So from. yeah, so Chair Smith has been expressed her frustration that um, the public comment periods have been taking longer than usual. Um, you, in, and as it stands right now, each community member that comes forward to um, share their feedback, it's three minutes. Um, and public comment has run anywhere from 45 minutes to over an hour of uh, public comment, much of which has been community members expressing their um, frustration and concerns over Commissioner Scholl. And um, and so that has um, caused quite a bit of conversation with the Board of County Commissioners and Chair Smith. Um, her feelings are that it's political and that she doesn't want political feedback in the meetings. And so she is pushing to uh, limit the public feedback to two minutes per person and to move it to the end of the meeting um, and uh, has expressed her desire to uh, limit public comment even further if that does not help. Um, in her opinion, public feed or uh, these types of comments could be submitted in writing. Um, so as community members, you are entitled to share your opinion in writing or come to a, a BCC meeting. And that is a great space to share your feedback. I did make one suggestion to uh, Mr. Smith, the county, uh, Administrator says maybe if we shorten the commissioner's uh, comments at the end to maybe five minutes, that their meetings wouldn't run so long. I have no comment on that, Mister. <laughs> yeah. Rich um, thought of it. I just said it. Yeah. So to to that end, I used the three minutes um, at the last um, commissioner's. Um, um, the county commissioners um, meeting to uh, give them an update as to what we were about, our election, um, our retreat, et cetera. Uh, I did, uh, did realize that um, the last time I sat in on a meeting, which was a couple of weeks previous, there was no, uh, no in-person um, contact. And now that's evolved to where there were I think three commissioners uh, there, and there were a couple of folks that gave testimony in person. Uh, and the two that gave testimony were, were um, business owners that were frustrated with, with 
on the limitations imposed upon them by, by the COVID crisis. Uh, to, my, to the point of, of, of what um, Katie's saying, yeah, it, you really, you have to respect if somebody's gonna take the time to engage that it's something that's important to them. Um, and I'm not sure that, um, that that's necessarily doing anybody. I mean, they gotta get the stuff out there off their chest. It isn't, it isn't um, and it is political, but so is pretty much anything, if you wanna put that spin on it, that somebody's gonna complain about. I mean, you can make it political if you like. So. Um, we're going to try with Beaver Creek to keep doing uh, an update for them once a month, Beaver Creek on one day and, and ourselves on another, uh, so that they don't get it, they, they can remember the difference between the two of us. Um, we did get um, at the end of the meeting, um, uh, Paul Savas um, uh, gave some kudos to the volunteers out in the community and included the the hamlets and the CPOs, so um, we, we appreciate that. But yeah, uh, uh, who knows? Who knows how that's how that's all going to play out? But that's that's good to know that, that that's what they're thinking, or that's what Chair Smith is thinking. Thanks, Rick. Uh, any anything else out there that uh, that anybody wants to share? Um, oh, we got a Len finger up. Take it, Len. One thing that I neglected to bring up earlier was the fact that, and Katie mentioned it here a little bit ago, the response that was uh, asked by the CPO Summit from CPOs as far as uh, Mark Schull, letter to Mark, or letter to the county requesting Mark Schull to, to step down or to that effect. And uh, since the CPOs represent about half the uh, population of Takamas County, we felt that it was uh, prudent probably to be able to ask whether the CPO people uh, would like to comment on that. And I forgot to even bring it up. But uh, as a board, would the Hamlet want to make a statement or send a statement to the county as far as their position on Mark Scholl being uh, removed or have him resign as far as that's concerned? That's one topic that has been kicked around, but we really haven't discussed it. Yeah, uh, you and I, you know, kind of, you kind of bounce this around and I've talked to folks around it. Um, my, my feeling is that um, that's why uh, I wanted the, the, the focus group, which you're uh, a part of, um, to sit down, put some guidelines together for our area and then apply that going forward to, to the Mark Scholl um, situation and then let our, our community know um, that um, that we're concerned about it and and get feedback. I think it's perfectly appropriate for any organization to to make a statement to that effect. I just think it's it's got to be a statement that isn't you know allows people the opportunity to 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 give their their uh, I guess to either vote or or give their input um, as opposed to just saying that that we as a board, um, be it CPO or be it Hamlet is uh, of, of a, a specific, um, have, a, have a specific uh, perspective. The, the perspective that we need to present is what our community tells us their perspective is. Not that we can't try to influence that or give, you know, give our opinions, but it isn't our opinions that should be sought, it's, it's the communities. So that hopefully will come out of this, um, what, what we're going to do as far as a focus group. Um, are you good with that, Lynn? Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we are aware of it. I don't have any uh, driving force behind me, if you will, to uh, go one way or the other. And uh, again, the political aspect, I want to stay away from that entirely. So it's just to make sure that the uh, members of the community and the, the uh, Hamlet and the CPO are aware that we are aware, I guess you'd say, and uh, if there is any input that they would like to bring forward, we would uh, welcome it. Well, maybe that's, maybe that's something that we need to have on the agenda for our next our next meeting is a, um, a, a at least some kind of a survey of those attending, uh, how, what their what their feeling is about it. I, 
anybody else on the board um, um, or, or CPO board that, that has, a, has a take on this? Yeah, Mark Schultz. Uh, Say it again. One, one thing I just would hey, like to mention that <laughs> we should possibly put a, something on the website if we can have a, a comment section. I don't know how you can do something like that, but if people would like to put in a comment, one for or against or whatever uh, on the website, if that would be a possibility. I don't know. Can you do that, Tate? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. You there want you a go. poll? Katie Kreider. I was just going to suggest that our focus group committee get together and draft a letter um, based on what what our stance is, um, gathering other, you know, already public um, information about it um, and put our best draft together and we could either share that at the next um, Hamlet meeting or put send it out a newsletter and ask our community to reply somehow, whether it's via the website or whether it's um, just an, an email address, you know, our Stafford Hamlet at Gmail. I, I don't know what the best way to do it is. Katie Wilson, you might have some suggestions from a, a pro, you know, Clackamas County stand. Um, so you're wanting my opinion on how to gather community feedback or my opinion on how to submit the letter? Well, a little bit of both. I mean, to okay. me, I think, why don't we, instead of asking for feedback first, why don't we take our best pass at what, what our draft? Sure. I think it's always easier to come to a group of people with an idea than to yeah, have everyone definitely. give their feedback yeah. on something that doesn't exist yet. So I, I think that's a great idea, Katie, yeah. to draft something that the, the board mostly agrees on and then take that to the community if you're wanting community feedback. Uh, I like the idea of putting something on your website to ask for feedback. It could be like a survey monkey link or I'm not sure if WordPress has a polling tool, Tate or Katie, you might know that. I would say, yeah, if we have an email list, let's just push, let's just push a survey out through the email list, then we can post yeah. the results for the website. That's a great idea. Cause I, what we usually do is use social media or email list to drive people to a website. Um, generally speaking, people don't go just to a website unless there's a reason to. So I like the idea of using an email list server or um, your social media, your Facebook page or whatever to gather, to encourage people to take a survey and then put the data on the website as to what the results were. Um, and then as far as submitting the letter, um, you can use the BCC mail uh, email address that goes to county administration and the board of county commissioners. I'd love it if you could copy me just so I know that it happened. Um, and that way I can make sure to follow up if there's any questions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great idea to put something out and ask, I would do that with just any issue is to always come to the community with a recommendation and then go from there. Okay. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Katie Kreider. So anybody else? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, Katie, uh, CCI sent a, uh, formulated a letter and sent it out. Did that go out to the, to the Hamlets and CPOs or is that something that we could forward so that they could kind of look and see what CCI did along this line? So that letter was sent to the board and then um, I did, Karen from the CPO summit asked for it. So I did share it with her. So I don't know um, if that made its way to the Stafford board, but I'm happy to send that out if um, you're interested in seeing it. Um, I can do that right now. I think that'd be a good idea just so they can see what our letter looks like. And, um... Sure. Good idea. Thanks, Rick. Uh, um, okay, and John John Keith has not come back. Um, no, nope. okay, all right. Um, I think the only thing he was saying is they they they've created a hierarchy in the I two hundred five discussion that it's now combined with the uh, convention or um, um, the Rose Garden uh, 
freeway work that they're contemplating. It was going to, sounds like it was going to be an either or at one point, but the Rose Garden is pretty much back in the, in the, in the forefront, but there's somebody over the top of both, both, um, both activities. And that, I don't know that that's good or bad for, for the I-205, um, for progress on that. I, I don't think there's enough money in the budget. I mean, when they say that they're a 1.3 billion short, there's a shortfall in the Oregon, um, Oregon budget. It doesn't feel like that um, doing a, a big massive freeway undertaking is probably in the in, in next year's, um, um, it's not a line item for sure. Anyway, but that was that was what he said, and and he said that you know there's some different perspectives now as far as tolling, but the tolling is still very much um, uh, up in play. So um, maybe we can get John in um, at our next meeting um, to to give us some more clarity on that. Anything else uh, before we uh, before we fold up the tent for the evening? Rich Fiala. Uh, just one of the things you've got at the bottom of the agenda is next month's meeting uh, with Nelly going to be there. Did you want to mention that? Yeah, I, I guess I wasn't sure that she was. Um, we're supposed to have a meeting with her in a couple of weeks to, to see, um, you know, I, I, I didn't know that she had committed to that if it was available. I, I wasn't making her but yeah, I mean, that's that's fine if you want to announce that, if you think that, that she for sure is available. Well, I can tell her we announced it and then she has no choice, but just to... <laughs> uh, fair enough. Let's leave it open. Uh, yeah, but yeah, one more bridge burnt behind us. Um, what, what, what I'm mentioning for you board members and attendees that don't know is Nellie McAdams is the direct executive director for the uh, Oregon Agricultural Trust. And she participated in one of our uh, town halls in the fall of 19 or uh, spring of 20, excuse me. And we were trying to get her back, uh, kind of continue that conversation. So I guess we aren't quite sure. So we'll know in a couple of weeks when we talk to her. That's it. Yeah, I mean, if it isn't, I, I would think if it isn't in March, it would be in April, but um, e either way. Uh, We'll, we'll keep you guys all posted. Anything else? Okay, this is the time when we say goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks everybody for attending. Good night. Good night. See you in a month. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>